it's my pleasure to speak to researchers, uh, teacher educators, uh, practitioners, and of course my friends and uh, colleagues. I have colleagues here as well. Um, when I'm invited uh, to uh, speak in this session, I thought uh, I'd just uh, sort of really in charge of IT and education for several months. But I've been in the Bureau and uh, as an insider, I know probably to tell another story, which is very similar, <laughs> but an insider story about you know, what's actually happened to the three stages of IT and education, because there are really a lot of interfaces of this policy with the curriculum reform and other uh, reform initiatives in Hong Kong. So um, I take this opportunity um, uh, for sharing um, our messages with you and of course to listen to you and of course to look back in the last year, 10 years in order to tell what we're going to do in the next years, hoping that we will, uh, we will also get feedback from you. Um, I, I have a PowerPoint. I have the sort of uh, uh, no, I have um, the image of uh, preparing very long PowerPoints. But this one is the shortest version that I have ever had. I think I only have uh, less than 10 slides that try to sum up what's happened in the last 10 years and then what we're going to do in the 10 years. Um, partly because I know, because like yesterday, I tried to search, you know, what's happened in the last 10 years and I look at the uh, uh, Nancy's reports, I look at the website, and then you see the power of information technology. I just find that I actually don't have to say them again because you see, Nancy just taught, told you quite a lot. And then so what I'm going to tell you maybe uh, is um, how um, IT in education is a, how IT in education is really located in the Hong Kong reform. Maybe this is something that is not made very explicit in the past. And that's why, you know, when we look at each uh, policy analysis, I'm very, uh, 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 very thankful to Alan uh, for analyzing the languages using the documents. I never, you know, try to analyze those documents like that. I hope that our policy, well, in future, I'll be very careful if there's a fourth report. <laughs> if there's a fourth report. Let's take a look at this. Now, Nancy actually have already mentioned that in year 2000, um, know uh, because there are many many consultative meetings working groups working together um, the Hong Kong government has actually developed um, a very big uh, education reform blueprints that cover nearly all aspects of the system and that's why you know in a sense uh, some people may feel that oh because um, the IT in ed uh, blueprint was made in 1998 why the mission is not clear and then how it dovetails with the how the new reform dovetails with the previous reform but if you take a look at curriculum you know Nancy just mentioned that uh, in year 2000 uh, the curriculum reform or curriculum innovation actually give a platform you know for positioning or placing uh, where IT in education is. If you read the uh, seven learning goals, now these seven learning goals are actually uh, um, um, recommended in year two, 2005. This is for new senior secondary education. And then you, you read all of them, they, they actually say very similar to what we had in year 2000. I read it very quickly, but uh, every student is expected to be biliterate, trilingual, broad knowledge base. Every, I think all the things that you come across in all the major education blueprints around the world. Um, in the fourth one, it's about, um, uh, because of the special, uh, I mean, uh, Hong Kong is a metropolitan, uh, cosmopolitan city. You see, we respect about uh, pluralism of cultures, views, and so on and so forth. And then, one of the seven learning goals is always I. From a bridge for about you using IT as a, a skill and then for lifelong uh, for being uh, for developing student into a lifelong learner and so on and so forth. So it's always there. It's a very very important um, um, uh, uh, learning goal. And uh, and actually in now all our curriculum blueprints or key learning areas and uh, IT is actually a generic skill um, that cut across all the curriculum uh, uh, curricula in Hong Kong. And, uh, and I remember that um, 
when we set um, set the theme for the curriculum reform, in order to um, achieve the vision, we do have a vision. The vision of the whole education reform is all about whole personal development and also lifelong learning. So you see that uh, this is for the first time when all the education initiatives are gearing towards student learning. So what is the vision for, for the whole reform? This is still the vision, it hasn't changed. The vision is whole personal development and lifelong learning, which applies from kindergarten to uh, university education. But in terms of curriculum, as you said, you know, you need to define it. So for curriculum, we define it as helping students to learn to learn. So this is the theme for the reform. And then I still remember that when we start, um, people said, oh, it's so abstract. What do you mean by learning to learn? So we think that we need to give students some, or teachers some handle so that they know what they need to do or what they could do in order to promote learning to learn. So we have four key tasks. One is reading, reading to learn. Second one is more in civil education because we, we, we are actually a chi very Chinese community and more in civil education is always you know, in our culture. The third one is uh, project learning because we, 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 we talk about uh, knowledge building and uh, and then what is the fourth one? Now for those who are Hong Kong, people do you know, do you remember the fourth one? The key task is the four things that we think that help teacher to, to sort of have a handle of how to promote learning to learn. Yes, IT for interactive learning. So we have already established, you know, um, a very clear you know, position for IT. It's not IT for IT's sake. IT is for learning, it's not just learning, it's not just self-learning, it's about you know, interacting and working with others. Although, I must admit that at that time, we, we just talked about it quite vaguely. And then of course, it's, it's, a, it's a research community, it's a teacher education institution that has to come to expand them and articulate them and then uh, improve them. So this is where we are. Uh, I want to show you a quite a scary diagram now. What, well, the purpose of showing you a, of showing you a very stark, scary diagram, not to scare you because uh, Hong Kong, or to, 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 to say that Hong Kong is very proud of having many reforms. The purpose of this showing this diagram is to show why IT um, is important to education. All right, this for uh, school principals, administrators, for the government, and of course for students. Um, show you all the data. Now you see that we're very consistent. Um, at least we try to be consistent. Or we try to um, uh, put students in the center and learning in the center. Uh, people, some, some people said that there's only one reform, that is the student, uh, student learning reform. But of course there are bits of reforms that sometimes we, uh, which we are not able to make very um, uh, uh, explicit connections with. But this time I try to put all the reforms in one diagram focusing on the students on the one hand, uh, we expand the learning opportunities for students by you know, introducing the new system, expanding tertiary education, um, post-secondary uh, education, by diversifying education opportunities and the curriculum. And uh, now, I put it in red. I put it red. Later on, you'll see why it is put in red. Ultimately, you know, for the learning reform to be successful is actually the frontline work of schools. Ultimately, it has to be. And then, um, therefore, we think that uh, well, the policy makers are, are only there to provide the supporting conditions because we know the platform, the real place for learning reform to take place is really in the school. And then that's why we encourage a lot of modular school-based initiatives, not because we want to shirk our responsibilities, or just because of the reality that we need a lot of frontline wisdom 